Hello everyone and welcome back to Auto Scholar with Mr. B. I'm Mr. B and today we are adjusting the valves in this 1992 BMW 325 i-Touring. So this is a maintenance item but we are doing this because we just installed the cam in this engine a few weeks ago and I've been driving around. I've given the cam enough time to break in and the rockers enough time to break in. So you always after something like this you want to adjust the valves after the break-in period. And so we're gonna go ahead and do this today. But BMW does recommend adjusting the valves every 15,000 miles, or if you have any abnormal noise or clicking from this engine. Now these engines are pretty clicky anyway. They do have a mechanical click to them, and that is normal. It's with every one I've owned. This is my sixth one. And it's just one of those things that you just have to deal with being an E30 owner. So what we're gonna do is take off the valve cover, and right now I'm actually in the middle of filming another video of our radiator fan. So I've got the radiator and the fan and everything off of this car. And so that's when I just said, hey, I might as well go ahead and adjust the valves since I have access to the crankshaft there and it'll make it a lot easier if we have that out of the way. You do not have to remove the radiator to do this. You can access the crankshaft from underneath the vehicle with a wrench or you can put it in gear and actually move the car back and forth and that will turn the engine as well and get it to where the point where you can adjust each valve individually. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's the tools you're gonna to need. This is a 10 millimeter setup right here, three inch drive. You can also do a quarter inch. That is just gonna be used to get the valve cover off and the bracket that supports the intake off the valve cover. Uh, this is a 10 millimeter wrench. We're gonna use this to loosen the adjuster on the rocker. This is a 22 millimeter uh, socket wrench here, half inch drive setup. Uh, you can also use a regular wrench if you like. And if you have a seven eighths of an inch, you can make that work instead of the 22 millimeter. I know 22 normally isn't included in most metric sets. You're also going to need a feeler gauge and I recommend getting the 90 degree feeler gauges here. And uh, this is a really nice one here. And the feeler gauge you need is gonna be a 0 0.25 millimeter. And that's the only one you're gonna need for this job. And you're also gonna need something to turn the adjuster. So this is a three millimeter Allen socket, L-shaped socket. And uh, this is gonna be getting in there to turn that adjuster to make sure that the eccentric is uh, meeting the feeler gauge correctly. And if you don't have one of these, you can use a coat hanger. It's about the same diameter here as a three millimeter. And you can just take the coat hanger and cut a piece out of it and shape it into an L like that. And you can use that instead of a three millimeter Allen. And here I have my checkoff list. So I have the intake and exhaust valves listed here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I put this on the windshield and every time I adjust a valve, I go ahead and just mark one of these off. That way I'm keeping track of what I've adjusted. And that way I don't have to do things twice or uh, by chance forget a valve uh, adjustment. So I just always use that and it, it's very easy to keep track of what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and get to the car and get the valve cover off and get started. Okay, so went ahead and got the valve cover off. Now I can show you guys exactly what is going on underneath here. So on each of the rockers, you will see that there is a 10 millimeter nut and a bolt that slides through it. And this is the part that we're adjusting here. So you see that hole there is where we put the uh, Allen uh, tool or your coat hanger. And we're gonna rotate this down or up and that's gonna adjust the clearance between the valve and the rocker. Now to do that, we have to have the camshaft in a special position. And so the camshaft is underneath here, you can see it. And we need the camshaft to be contacting the rocker at its lowest point. And let me grab my camshaft. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about. But basically, and let's see if I can find one that's at its lowest spot here. See right here, this one is at its lowest spot and you can rock it back and forth and you can see it actually has a little play You can hear it clicking back and forth. And that play is what we're adjusting. So if the camshaft is rolled in the up position, then you're not gonna have that clearance and you're not gonna be able to adjust the valve. So what we're gonna have to do is rotate this crankshaft, which is connected to the camshaft by the timing belt, to get the camshaft in the position we want to where we can adjust each valve. Now, 
you can you can take each cylinder and rotate it to top dead center and adjust both valves at the same time because at top dead center both valves will be closed uh, or you can just rotate them out to where you can get you know just rotate a little bit then check and then just mark each one off that you adjust so real easy this is going to be the intake side because it's on the side of the intake this is the exhaust side because it's on the side of the exhaust so it's very easy to identify which valve you're adjusting. Um, a lot of people will remove the spark plugs and what that's going to do is it's going to bring compression to zero and that's going to make things easier for when we're rotating the engine. I don't normally do that. I just normally, uh, you know, turn the crankshaft and I'll monitor the camshaft for when it's in the down position. So let me show you the camshaft rocker uh, relationship here when you're doing the adjustment. Okay, so here is the old camshaft out of my engine that was chewed up by a bad rocker. And here's an old rocker here. And so what you're wanting to do when this camshaft is sitting in the car, you have an up point, which is right here, and then you have the reverse of it, which is where the rocker is going to be pretty much not even touched by the camshaft. And so what you want is you want that rocker to be on that bottom part of the teardrop. So imagine a teardrop, you want it on the bottom, and this is the top part of a teardrop. That's not where you want it. So you're gonna turn this camshaft until this is facing up, and then this right here is sitting there, and then that's when you do the adjustment. If you do the adjustment, if it's like this, or anywhere off that bottom circle there, then you're not gonna get an accurate adjustment. And with, with inaccurate adjustments, you can get broken rockers, you can get eight up camshafts, or best case scenario, a misfire, or even some noise, just depending on how far out of adjustment it is. So it's very important to get this correct. Okay, so I got the exhaust valve right here. Uh, and again, it's hard to see, but this is gonna be at the bottom of that teardrop. And normally I can tell that I've got it right because again I can shake this back and forth so what you need to do is loosen this 10 millimeter I'm gonna try to do this one-handed I'm probably not gonna do a good job of it these don't have to be crazy tight and then so I'm get better light on it here we're gonna get this feeler gauge I'm gonna go up under like this, and you see that that's turned. So then we're gonna take our tool here, little tool, and put it in that hole. And we're gonna turn it. Yeah, it's gonna be impossible for me to do this uh, one-handed, but we're gonna adjust it to where basically this is gonna be just a slight rubbing when we go back and forth underneath here with this feeler gauge. So this of course is way too much, but it needs to be, have a slight drag on it. And that slight drag, um, you know, you need to be able to, just with a little tiny drag, be able to move that feeler gauge in and out. After that, you wanna hold this wrench in that position and then tighten this back up. And then after that, you'll, mark off your one down here and you'll move on to the next valve and then you just have to do that you know 12 times and after that and of course you want to do this while the engine is cold okay what i mean by cold is you should be able to touch the radiator or touch the engine even touch the exhaust manifold and it not be hot okay because when this engine warms up these clearances get tighter and so with those clearances tighter that's gonna make your adjustment off and you're gonna to be too loose when it's cold. So again, it's just kind of a feel thing. Uh, this is just like adjusting valves on an old Volkswagen, except the adjuster's different, but it's the same technique. All right, so a couple of tips for you guys. Uh, just make sure after you're done, you know, after you've crossed everything out, 
just make sure that everything is snug in here. I just normally go through one more time and snug up all of the uh, eccentric locks. And um, that's pretty much it. Also, if you uh, have been turning the engine, make sure that you take your tool off the front of the engine. Don't crank the car up with that on there. You're gonna have a bad time. And uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, hopefully this is uh, a big help to the, the folks that wanna go ahead and adjust their own valves and uh, you know save you some money, save you some time and uh, get to know your car a little bit better. If you like what you've seen, uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I got some more stuff coming with this uh, E30 here. Um, and uh, I've got a fan video coming and an engine tick video coming. And of course, some other smaller projects as well. And there's already some content on there. So uh, hopefully y'all enjoy that. And we'll see you next time on Auto Scholar with Mr. B.